Today's video is all about pan solo, which translates to kneaded bread. Or, yeah, massaged bread, or it just doesn't really translate well, but it's just an amazing bread. From Puerto Rico, it's slightly sweet, pillowy, soft, tender, chewy, all the things that you want a good bread to be. Um, and I'm gonna teach you how to make it. You're first gonna make a starter. So grab a jar with a tight fitting lid and add bread flour and active dry yeast to it. The starter is used to add a little bit more flavor to the pan sobao. It also gives the yeast in the dough a chance to start doing its thing before you add it to the rest of the dough. Just add some water to the flour and the yeast that you have in the jar already and mix it together until it forms a thick paste. Screw the lid onto the jar and allow the starter to sit at room temperature for eight hours. Look at us with the fancy time-lapse action. After eight hours, take your jar of starter and put it into the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours. Overnight works too. Just put it in the night before you plan to bake it and in the morning you can work with it. Take the starter out of the refrigerator an hour before you plan to mix the dough. Once the starter has warmed for an hour, you're going to add the rest of the active dry yeast, granulated sugar, and three tablespoons of warm water to the bowl of a stand mixer. You can also make this in a regular mixing bowl, but your arms are going to be put to work, so just be prepared. Mix these together and allow the yeast to bloom in that warm water for five minutes. This gives you an idea that your yeast is actually alive and will do what it's supposed to do in the bread. After five minutes, the yeast will have become foamy. And if it hasn't, then that means the yeast is dead and you need to replace it. Add the warm starter to the bowl, along with lard or vegetable shortening. And use the paddle attachment to start blending the mixture together. Add the remaining warm water followed by three cups of bread flour. Blend this on low speed using the paddle attachment until a thick paste forms in the bowl. Gradually add kosher salt to the mixture. The reason why we add kosher salt so late is because salt actually kills yeast. Yeah, fun fact. Scrape down the bowl and the paddle attachment and replace the paddle attachment with your dough hook. Turn the mixture on to first speed and add the remaining bread flour. Once all the bread flour has been added, increase the speed to setting two on a KitchenAid. It's gonna be medium low. Knead the dough for a full 10 minutes on second speed. By the time the dough is finished mixing, nothing should remain on the bottom of the bowl. If you see some dough on the bottom, that means you need to add a little bit more flour. When finished, the dough should be soft and supple, but not sticky how pretty that dough is grab it this is how you need it if you don't have a stand mixer just put in some work 10 minutes get some lightly grease the bowl with vegetable oil you only need probably about two teaspoons at the most just pour it into the bottom of a mixing bowl Use your hand to just rub the oil into the bowl. 
and then transfer your dough into that oiled bowl, flipping it over to coat the surface with the oil. This will keep your dough from cracking as it rises. Tightly cover the bowl with plastic wrap or you can even drape a kitchen towel over it and allow the dough to rise in a warm spot in your kitchen for an hour. Check out the time lapse. I love time lapses. Oh, but it's getting a little bit too big. After an hour, punch down your dough to dispel the gases that have built up. Turn the dough out onto a surface. You shouldn't need any flour, but if it starts to stick, go ahead and dust a little bit. Cover the dough with a clean kitchen towel and let it rest for 15 minutes before cutting it into two equal pieces and using the side part of your palm to press it against the countertop to form it into a cylinder. Place both cylinders on a parchment or silicone baking mat lined sheet pan and cover with a clean kitchen towel. Let it rise for 30 minutes while you preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Pop an iron skillet into the bottom of the oven. This is gonna radiate some intense heat. After the oven has been preheated, drop some ice cubes into that skillet to get some steam going in the oven. Check it out. Go ahead and pop the bread dough into the preheated steamy oven and bake for 20 to 25 minutes till it looks like this, like that. Look how soft it is. I was gonna make some primo sandwiches, man, I'm telling you. It's so fluffy. Look how fluffy it is. Slice and eat however you want. You earn this. You have pan sobao questions? I have answers. You don't consume pork products, so of course you can't put the lard in your pan sobao, which is cool. You can replace the lard in this recipe with equal amounts of vegetable shortening. You could also use unsalted room temperature butter in place of the lard. Yes, with caveats because I've never tested the recipe um, with a gluten-free flour. So you're going to have to be the experiment. Use something that you can replace like a one-to-one -one flour. It won't be as chewy as the original recipe, but I think it'll be fine. You can totally make this into smaller loaves. You can bust this out into three loaves by dividing the proof dough into thirds, or you can make 24, two dozen smaller buns of bun soel. You can also make 12 hoagie rolls, and that's what I use to make my tripleta sandwich. Um, I got super Puerto Rican right there, tripleta sandwich. Um, so yeah, you can do that. You can all break it down however you wanna break it down. Obviously, you're going to decrease the baking time, but only by about five minutes. So it, even if you're making buns, it's only gonna go into the oven for probably about 15 to 18 minutes. Same temp, same everything else. Yeah. I use active dry yeast for this recipe and that's what this recipe calls for, but you can also use instant yeast. You just add the instant yeast to the flour and you just like go. I would use active dry yeast because it's just funner. It, it's fun to watch, I think. Now that you see how easy it is to make pan soba, I hope that you take a day and a smidge more to make it yourself at home. You're going to love it. The full recipe for this pan soba can be found on my website senseinedibility.com. It's amazing on its own. Ask any Puerto Rican you know that has gone to the bakery to get a loaf. They usually end up eating it before they get home with it. So then they have to go back and get another one. It was a big thing. But now you can make it at home. And as you can see, one recipe makes two loaves. So you can save one for later, eat one now, whatever you choose to do. 
If you like this recipe, let me know. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future recipe videos. And if this is your first time making pan sobala, let me know how it went for you. Let me know if you loved it. If you've made or eaten pan sobala before and you tasted this one, let me know what you think. How does it compare? Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you on the next go around.